It's finally official. On October the 4th, Google is holding an event where they're going to unveil the future of the Google Pixel devices. Now, they've actually let quite a bit more slip than most companies would have even dared to, but it does leave us with some interesting answers and also some interesting questions. Let's get right into it. So there are gonna be two smartphones, the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL. And whilst the Pixel 2, the smaller device, is gonna be quite a conservative departure visually speaking, the XL should actually look quite different to last year's models. We know from some pretty reliable sources almost exactly what the XL is gonna look like, and that it's gonna have a six inch Quad HD display. We do know much less about the smaller model. It could be a five inch, could be a 5.6 inch, and it might have either a 1080p or a Quad HD panel. Now, Google recently released a video where they essentially teased the event where they're gonna announce these phones, and in this video, they basically told us exactly what their strategy is. And from this, we can draw some interesting inferences. Google is essentially trying to fix almost every problem that people have with their smartphones with these devices. First up is camera. Now, one of the first questions asked in the trailer is why does my phone take blurry photos? And almost instantly, this implies OIS. This implies the new Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL again have optical image stabilization on their rear cameras, which was missed out on the Pixels last year. This is very important because it means that when you're taking video, it can be very well stabilized. And considering how good a job the Pixels last year did, even with electronic image stabilization, it'll be very exciting to see what they can do with optical. Now in terms of camera resolution, it's a bit of a tricky one because with megapixels, there's a bit of a trade-off. As you increase the megapixel count, if you keep the same image sensor size, then you actually get less light per pixel, which results in more noise. Having said that, more megapixels are good because they increase the amount of potential detail your photo can have. So there's a trade-off and most smartphone manufacturers, especially this year, have found a balance of that with about 12 megapixels as the sensor size. Having said that, if you take a look at the lens on the back of the Pixel 2 XL, it looks about three times the size as the one seen on the Pixel. So if the image sensor has been accordingly upgraded, it's very possible they could fit a 16 or a 20 megapixel camera on there. Another thing you probably noticed, which in 2017 stands out like a sore thumb, is the fact that that is a single camera. Now last year that was pretty excusable, but in 2017, just about every single manufacturer has a dual camera on their smartphone. So the chances are, I would say, considering how much of a market leader the Pixel was in terms of its camera, the Pixel 2 is gonna have some very serious optics to compensate. Perhaps the aperture is already wide enough so that you don't need two cameras to create this artificial level of zoom because it can do it natively. Now nothing is confirmed on that front, but I'm willing to bet it'll be one of the best smartphone cameras of the year, even if it is just one. In the trailer, another thing that was pointed out was why is my phone always running out of storage? And this seems to be pointing towards Google Photos. So with last year's Pixels, Google made it so that no matter what resolution photo or video you're taking with the phone, you'll get unlimited storage online with Google Photos. And that's invaluable. In fact, I'd say that almost definitely outweighs not having a micro SD card on here because not only do you save storage, but also your files are always backed up. So it's not 100% clear if Google is adding functionality to this feature or if they're just gonna to continue to talk about how great it is. One thing they could do, which I think is quite cool, is what they've done for photos and videos, they could extend to the music you have on your phone as well as the other files. They also talk about battery, which I'm sure for a lot of us is a great, great relief because it's true, even today, that is one of the biggest problems with smartphones. Now, whilst we haven't seen the full dimensions of the phones, we don't know exactly how thick they are and how much battery they could house. What I would say is that if Google is trying to solve the battery life problem, it's gotta be at least 3000 milliamp hours in the Pixel 2 and 3500 in the 2XL. Let's not forget that with Android 8.0 Oreo, which is going to be pre-installed in both phones, you do get some extra battery saving as opposed to 7.0. One of the more interesting things Google also mentions is phones being hot, fragile and broken. So this, all three of these actually point towards the phone being made out of a stronger material. So 2017 has been a year where we've seen a lot of smartphones moving towards a glass bag. And glass is nowhere near as conductive as metal, so it traps heat inside and therefore allows phones to get really rather hot. So if Google is gonna use a metal frame on its devices, that could somewhat reduce the heating problem. As for phones being broken though, a lot of current flagships are made from Gorilla Glass 5, which is, to be honest, quite a strong compound and is fairly drop resistant. So to be stronger than that, my current guess is that they'll use 7000 series aluminium, which has the properties of being conductive, but is also extremely strong, as you might have seen with the Moto Z2 Force, which is practically an indestructible smartphone. So now we get to the really interesting stuff, because the other questions Google asks, why is my phone impersonal? Why doesn't it understand me? Why is my phone dumb? And all of this points towards Google Assistant. 
we are now pretty sure that Google Assistant is going to be one of the core things Google focuses on when they launch their new smartphones. Which is interesting because if we look at what Samsung has done with Bixby, if we look at what Apple has done with Siri, those two voice assistants have more or less taken a back seat. And since Google Assistant has been launched, it's now available on iPhones too. So it's in direct competition with Siri, and that perhaps points towards Google trying to completely dominate the personal assistant battle. In terms of what they can do in the next version of Google Assistant, the key word is intelligence. We want an assistant that not only responds correctly when you ask it basic things, but can also understand the flow of a conversation. You want to actually be able to talk to your phone as if it was a person, and you want it to be able to respond in a natural and conversational manner. Now given this focus on Google Assistant, it only makes sense for there to be a dedicated button. But actually, one of the patents that was filed not too long ago by Google was that of a squeeze functionality. Something implemented by HTC with a U11 smartphone, but with Google Assistant as the actual trigger, it could be a very natural and seamless combination. So when you're holding the phone in a one-handed grip, you might be able to simply exert a little bit more pressure on one side and activate the assistant. And making it more accessible like this is going to make more people want to use it. So aside from what we've seen in that latest trailer, the specifications. Now a lot of people were talking about the Snapdragon 836. Because essentially what we saw last year was, although throughout the entire year every phone was using the Snapdragon 820, Google came in with the Snapdragon 821. A slightly faster version of the 820, but nothing game changing. So people were expecting the same thing to happen with the Snapdragon 835. Having said that, it's looking pretty unlikely that the Snapdragon 836 actually exists. No word from Qualcomm, no word from Google, we're not entirely sure. In terms of RAM, it's looking pretty likely that both phones are going to have 4GB, which is somewhere in the middle of the line in terms of performance, but no doubt Google's optimization is going to be top anyway. One thing which I thought was very interesting was that there was also a rumor Google is going to ditch the headphone jack and instead implement a dual stereo speaker setup, which for me, I don't really mind too much. I love the idea of stereo speakers, and to be honest, ever since the iPhone 7 cut the headphone jack, we started to see a bit of a trend with headphone manufacturers. A lot of the more popular earphones have now been remade into wireless versions, and it does seem like looking forward, most future earphones and headphones are going to be wireless anyways. So that's pretty much everything we know and can speculate about regarding Google's upcoming flagships. I really hope you enjoy the video. I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.